I do not know why this tactic has become popular. I think YouTube might be part of it. Stop, full stop. Don't do it, officers. Hi everyone, welcome to today's bonus badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection or eh, badge cam and dash cam today. I'm your host as always, John Correa. With me, our co-host, Mike Williver. Today's video comes to us from the land of enchantment, Santa Fe County, New Mexico. Zero Nine Solutions is a member of our holster consortium focused on duty gear for law enforcement officers and for private citizens who are using load bearing vests. They got all kinds of great stuff. Their radio holder is incredibly cool and really good. Check them out at 09holsters.com in the link in the description. This sheriff's deputy is on the lookout chasing down a guy who, uh, a pair of people who have been involved in an armed robbery and there is a firearm involved. And so he's gonna chase him down. We have audio, it's gonna get crazy. Shots 
shot fired, keeps to shoot. I've got a couple of rounds to my vehicle. 80 on 10-4, or 10 on 10-4. Continuing 124. Yeah, 10 4 is the pastor. Driver does not fire. Pastor at the pastor window. Fire to me several times to turn fire. It is a deadly force situation. On the last round, citizens were passing. Citizens were passing him when he fired at me, putting them in danger as well. He does not have due regard for the public as a danger. He's out the window shooting again. I'm return fire this time. Return fire. Vehicle slowing down. Vehicle shooting from the back window now. He's shooting from the back window. Vehicle almost 45 down. Returning fire. Shots, multiple shots fired, multiple shots fired, still shooting us from the back window. Returning fire. Returning fire. Now I need some more two, two, three rounds up here. Okay, vehicles about 45 out. Stand by. Vehicles now on the wrong side of 285. 285. All right, now he's back over. Okay, he's about 45 down. 45 down. Family stop. Family stop. If you go read the news stories that I've linked in the description, the passenger actually passed away at the scene. The driver made it through this one. He is facing a litany of charges. No one else was injured, and we gotta think about lessons. No, don't do it. This is just a bad idea. I, I, I'm telling you, it's a bad idea. Now that said, if I've ever seen it done remotely correctly, this is how, so we'll talk about that too. We have a new member of the Special Pants Brigade. Mm. You know, Mike, we do got to start right at the beginning thinking about this one because this officer's moving really fast. And of course, you know, you're going to be amped up. You're looking for an armed robber. Got a little dangerous here right at the beginning, though, with somebody not hearing the sirens and those things. Of course, you don't want to cause collateral damage and cause a car wreck on your way to stop the bad guy. Every time you're in a pursuit or driving in an emergency response type of a mode, officers, deputies, please listen to me when I tell you this. You got to be careful. You got to clear intersections. Even if it's green, you still got to pay attention and look because this could have ended really, really poorly. I've seen it end poor. I've seen it end poorly in the past, and you don't want to be the guy who doesn't get to help anyone because you've been involved in a serious accident on the way there. So this is really my big sticking point with this guy. Just slow down, clear the intersection. Give it. It takes an extra three seconds. It's worth it to prevent a, a bad accident. And, and again, no harm, no foul here in some significant sense. But it, take that extra three seconds. Clear the intersection to make sure that you don't cause an, an additional problem when you need to be focused on a bad guy. Okay, from here, Mike, I'm just gonna let this one play because this is a crazy, crazy chase. So let's talk first of all about the wisdom of getting the patrol rifle out while you are in pursuit in the driver's seat. I, I wanna say as a default, I don't think it's a smart idea to do because you're dealing with too many tasks at once. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I concur. I mean, this all's well that ends well. Uh, so this, you know, no, no one who didn't need to get hurt got hurt here. But, you know, I got to say just this kind of driving, I've done it quite a bit, is very stressful. It's very dangerous. And trying to do two very di different, very dangerous things at the same time, I'm not a big fan. I don't know when this got popular, but shooting through the windshield is, is a thing now. Uh, you know, I'm not going to second guess this officer. I probably would have uh, held back, called for an air unit, followed from a distance, uh, and tried not to have a running gun battle because there's just no way. You're, you can't practice this skill 
on a range. There's no there's no driving shooting range you can go to to practice this stuff. Um, you can practice shooting through the windshield, but while you're driving at a high rate of speed and being shot at, I'm just I'm just not a fan. I just don't I don't like the idea of it only because there's so many things that could go wrong. First of all. I hope, hope he's wearing eye protection. Let's start there. Yeah, let's start there. Is he got his eye protection on? And, and shooting a carbine inside of a patrol cruiser with no hearing protection on? Holy cow, the overpressure for the first few rounds is intense until he sticks the muzzle out the front of the, the hole, or, you know, the porthole that he has blown in the windshield. I, I just think right. driving a cruiser at 100 plus miles an hour while somebody is chasing you is a high stress, high cognitive load task. Um, you need to be focused on your breathing, on communicating, and and on piloting that car safely. You add to that getting accurate fire on this guy, and and I just really think that you're asking to do something that's almost impossible to do. Now that said, this guy seems to be a bit of a superhero because it seems that he did those things at the same time. I just don't want uh, our viewers to take the success of this and think, oh, this is a good idea because I think the, the difficulty factor here is humongous. I think he also pointed the gun at himself a couple times while it was coming in and out from between his feet. Gotta watch that. And of course, these first few shots, when you put them through that glass, those are going you do not know where. Those first few shots while the, the glass shatters are gonna be off into the wild blue yonder. Now, after that, he is gonna eventually push the muzzle through the hole that he has shot in the windshield and then be able to get a little bit more accurate shots. The only other thing I would say he's doing really well is looking way down the road to see, is there anybody else that's in my backstop and not firing when he has a bad backstop. Notice here though, Mike, he also picks up his microphone. So he is holding his rifle, driving with his forearm, talking on the radio. I, I, I just think, thank God nothing bad happened here, but this is a recipe for a disaster. I gotta say, first and foremost, I love how aggressive this guy is. This is a meat-eating crime fighter. This guy wants to go catch the bad guy. And, and he's got bad guys in front of him. Being injured. Yeah, and 100%, I mean, I don't like pursuits. I've said that before on this channel. I'm not a big fan of pursuits unless they're absolutely necessary. This is a necessary pursuit. These are armed bad guys. This is the very definition of why we pursue someone in a motor vehicle. But again, all the multitasking, uh, if you look at how the, the gun is, it's, it's barely sitting still for half a second. I just don't know how you're going to get accurate fire there. So re reiterate, I'm not a fan of shooting through the windshield. Let me preface it by saying while you're moving, if you're stationary and shooting through the windshield is an option, that's a whole different ball of wax. Yeah, if you're not while driving. the car is moving, especially at high speed, yeah. I, I also think even, okay, so, so if I have two officers in the vehicle and I'm the passenger officer and I'm not dealing with talking on the radio and driving the car, Maybe, and I'm not a big fan of that even without the driving aspect of it because of how much motion there's going to be, how difficult it is to get good hits, all the other things that are going to create problems. I will say as well, though, I really think this officer shows good fire discipline in, in content, you know, making sure that he does not take shots where he does not have a good backstop, where as soon as he sees traffic, he pulls that back, not going to take shots at that, not going to endanger the public. Um, and he's in a very rural environment where his backstop as he goes over these kind of rolling hills ends up being asphalt, ends up being the hill here or whatever. So so overall, it's probably, if there's a way to do it, he's probably doing it right. I just watched the original of this and, and watching the whole thing, I was just waiting for him to crash his cruiser or, or put a round in somebody that he didn't. Yeah, I just don't like the, I know I sound like a broken record. I'm not a fan of shooting through the windshield. I think at some point um, this has become like the, the the new the new hotness the new coolness and Ellie is getting getting through shootout. We had a guy on the podcast uh, who shot through his windshield, uh, Tim Grammons from Skokie PD in Illinois. Now at the time he was stationary and that was a situation where he had a bad guy actively approaching him and shooting at him. So getting out of the car, there was no time. He had to put rounds through the windshield to get at that bad guy. Again, here, I would really rather see him just back off. There's, where's this guy going to go, first of all? There doesn't appear to be a lot of side streets or, or, or uh, you know, off ramps or anything like that. So we could watch this guy from half a mile away, you know what I mean, and, have, and, and right. not be in a running gun battle. And I don't know if they have air cover or not, but, you know, just there's, I would prefer to see that rather than this. Yeah. Um, but, again, love the aggression. I will say this officer kept pretty calm. And, and again, I would really strongly recommend that, that all officers, if you're involved in a chase, practice your combat breathing, guys. 
Make sure that you understand that that four in, four hold, four out, four hold, it, it is actually a miracle worker at keeping your heart rate down, which will keep you in the correct state of arousal that will keep you from getting overstimulated and starting to, to have panic response. And I know some people are like, that sounds like WUSA and yoga and all that stuff. It actually works. It's evidence-based. So practice that combat breathing if you start thinking about, I'm going somewhere. You know, four in, four hold, four out, four hold, lowers your heart rate, lowers your cortisol levels, keeps you in the fight better. Now, okay, fine. They get this guy to finally crap up his vehicle. And, and again, the guy that was shooting at him, I think, was the passenger out of the back window and out of the side windows. So that guy shuffled off this mortal coil and, and okay, that's great. I think it's kind of interesting that you hear, Mike, I have never seen an officer ghost ride the whip like this. And I think that that was an interesting technique to put it in neutral and then let it guide you down where you might end up having to shoot someone and use it for moving cover. Never seen that either. Uh... I suspect one or more of these troopers might also be on a tactical team of some sort. They seem very, very switched on. So that's a new technique for me. I, I don't, I have to think about that one, John, honestly, to, see, to, to decide if I like it or not. I'd really rather they just stay back where they are and just keep guns on that car until they have enough guys there to clear it. But they got the job done. At the end of the day, they covered their ass.